Hello, my friends, I'd like to welcome you to our daily devotion and, and just express as we always do what a blessing it is, you know, for us to gather together and be sharing together, you know, especially when we share the blessings of the Lord and His Word. And in Psalm 133, verse 1, it tells us, Behold, how good and pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. And so, yes, indeed, it's it's good. It's a good thing. And, and God um, also uh, is blessed when we gather together in His name and talk about Him and give praise and honor and glory to Him. So before we begin, uh, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we just come before you, Lord, and we ask you as always that you would open up our hearts and our minds and that our hearts would be filled with the truth of your word. Father, that we would be living our lives accordingly as you guide, lead, and direct us daily. We pray all this, Father, in your most precious name. Amen. Well. There was a change of plans for me. I had a whole other devotional plan to do and share with you today, but right in the midst of it, the Lord um, changed my heart. Uh, with all the things that have been going on now in this country, in this world, and so many people that are going through heartbreak and tragedy and suffering and anguish and just so many things, it just seems like this would be a good time um, for us to have a dose of some joy. So I've titled, a uh, joy, excuse me. So I've titled my sharing with you today, Bring Back Our Joy. And, and in doing that, once again, I'm going to refer to the book of Nehemiah, which is a study that the Ladies Bible Study has been um, looking into and having such a great time while doing it. So as we get there, we're going to be looking at um, verse, I mean, chapter 8, uh, the last part of verse 10, where Nehemiah is speaking to the people, and he says to them, Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And we know, according to Scripture, that at that time, the Israelites were living sinful lives. They were faithless and they were fickle. And they were up and down in their, in their relationship and their fellowship with the Lord. They were constantly failing to remain faithful to God. And so in the midst of all that, Ezra began to read the Word of God to them in chapters 8 and 9. And so I just really recommend and encourage you to look at those chapters and just see the Word of God and how through this great man Ezra reading the Word, how it moved on the hearts of these people. Oh, and the more that he read, the more that they wanted to hear, and the more that they heard, that the more that their hearts were being stirred up and revival began to take place in their hearts and the joy began to return to them once again. Their joy was returning as their hearts were being revived by the Word of God. As I believe that the Lord has shown me, there were four things that were happening here in, the, in these verses and they should also be things that are uh, routinely taking place in the life of believer in believers' hearts. And those four things are in, in four different words. And those words are repentance, restoration, renewal, and rejoicing. So I'm just going to briefly go over these four points as it's like a stepping stone, a ladder to bring us to the joy that sometimes seems to escape us. And so as the Israelites of that day did, they began with repentance. And we all know that repentance means a turning away from our sin. It's just simply put, that's what it means. And for me, the greatest example of a repentant heart is in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5. As Isaiah cries out to God, and he says, Woe is me, I am ruined. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord God Almighty. Isaiah was broken 
And he was broken not only over his sin, and when he was, um, after seeing the Lord God Almighty, when he was comparing who God was compared to him, he was a broken man. So he was broken over the sin and the sin of the people as well. And we know, and scripture teaches us, that true godly sorrow causes repentance. It causes us to grieve, and it causes us to pray, not only for our sins, but the sins of others as well, because we know that this sin grieves our God. So the second point, the second word, is restoration. And again, as we're building up that st uh, stepping stone, or that stair ladder, uh, to uh, having our joy return to us, we look at restoration, which is returning back to God. In Joel chapter 2, verse 25, as Joel was speaking, uh, God was speaking to the Israelites for what they were going through, he speaks to us to, as well, and he says, I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, God, eaten. You know, God will always restore his retent, repentant people. He'll restore them and bring them back to a place of blessing. You know, once we humble ourselves, come before him and repent. That's his promise. And our God is a God of kept promises. He never fails. And so then our third word is to renew. And we know, uh, we now uh, become spiritually new again, renewed in Christ that fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit that the Bible talks about begins to consume us and consume our lives as we resume once again that horizontal relationship with God, which then brings us to the final point, which by the way is my favorite, and I have a hunch it'll be your favorite as well. We're at the top of the ladder now, and we now can rejoice. And joy begins to fill our hearts. And the joy of the Lord truly becomes our strength. And we began to have a deeper understanding of what Isaiah, uh, what um, Nehemiah was speaking in that verse when he said, the joy of the Lord is our strength. God is our joy. It is that God-given gladness that's found when we are right with Him, when we are in a right relationship with Him, when we have surrendered to Him, when we are in His Word, it's always, the byproduct is always going to be joy, His joy, our joy, our strength, our refuge is the Lord. So those great words that we heard from Paul, rejoice always, again, I say uh, rejoice. That's what will bring back our joy. So as I close, I just want to close with this encouraging word from 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 8. And it says, In him, though now we see him not, yet believing, we rejoice with joy, unspeakable and full of God's glory. Let's, let's pray. Father, we come before you and oh, how incredibly awesome that you are, that, that your word is so filled with words of comfort, words that bring us to that full knowledge and understanding of who you are. And Lord, as we know, we begin to realize a deeper understanding of these incredible words of the joy of the Lord is our strength. We praise you and we thank you for that. We ask, Lord, that this joy would penetrate deep into our hearts, especially in the light of all that's going on in this world and, and even in our lives personally. So thank you for these words of encouragement and comfort. We pray this in your most precious name, Lord. Amen. Goodbye, my friends, and, and the, may the joy of the Lord be with you. Till we meet again.